I'm just pissed off. I'm venting. Take it as you will. Either this video is going to be really well received or really poorly received. We will see once I put it up. Well, it is rant time. It's been a very long time since I've gone on one. Normally, I try to keep calm and cool and give you guys accurate, meaningful information in my videos. I try to deliver it to you as best I can, as factually as I can, as accurately as I can. But man, you've read the title, you know what we're in store for, so buckle up. So this isn't the video I planned on filming today. As you can see, we've got the FA-20 here. We talked about the D4S system last week, and I plan to continue on that series of videos, but just today, I've just been rubbed the wrong way too many times, so this rant needs to happen. I need to get this out. So this stuff will continue. We're going to continue to talk about valve carbon issues, how to correct it, all that good stuff later on. But today, I just got to vent. So I know a lot of you longtime viewers are probably looking at this title saying, what the heck gives here? This has got to be clickbait. Why would Mr. Subaru say that Subarus are not reliable? Well, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this video is going to be about why Subarus are not reliable. And we're talking mainly about turbocharged Subarus here. The main reason that Subarus are so unreliable is the owner of the vehicle. The majority of the issues that are seen out of turbocharged Subarus are directly fault of the owner. I know some of this is probably going to hurt some feelings, but I really don't care. I'm f***ed off. I'm aggravated. It's just been one of those days dealing with idiots on the internet. So, everyone makes fun of Subaru head gasket issues. I've made video after video over the last eight years trying to dispel the rumors, get rid of the internet myths, all the memes, but... It's all for nothing because the younger crowd wants to perpetuate head gasket issues and Subaru are hand in hand. It doesn't matter what model, what year, what engine, they all blow head gaskets. Well, the factual information is the turbocharged engines never had head gasket issues. They never had head gasket issues. There was not a fault in the design of the head gasket. It's not an inherent fault of the Boxer engine. We've talked about Fixing the actual head gasket issue in the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter engine, the remedy for that is to put a turbo head gasket on it in place of the regular naturally aspirated head gasket. It's funny how Subaru never had an issue on the 1.5, 1.6, 1.8, 2.0 liter NA nor turbo, the 2.5 turbo, the 2.7, the 3 liter, the 3.3, or the 3.6 liter. All those engines were fine. Only the NA 2.5, but now every single Subaru is associated with head gasket issues. The reason why your head gaskets fail on your turbocharged Subaru, on your WRX, your STI, your Forester, XT, your Legacy, GT, etc., is because of you. Poor modifications, not tuning the car, too much boost, beating the hell out of the car. That's the stuff that blows the head gasket. It's not, again, a fault of the head gasket. A fault of the design of the Boxer engine, it lies on the owners that abuse these cars, do not maintain them, and poorly modify them. Whether you like to hear it or not, it's the truth. I know there are plenty of Subaru owners out there that take care of their cars, maintain their cars, do not abuse their cars. This video is not directed at you guys. Nor is it directed at you turbocharged guys that correctly modify your car, don't beat the ever-living crap out of it, do regular maintenance and don't have issues with your cars. We're talking about the kids that are like the 18 to 30 group that, you know, back in my day when I was that age, were running around in Honda Civics with cut off exhaust, underglows on them, Fast and the Furious decade when the Fast and the Furious movies first come out. You know, it was that kind of owner. Those are the kids that are now getting WRXs, STIs, Forester, XTs. Legacy GTs secondhand and destroying them. That's 100% what they do. They poorly modify them. They put cheap eBay coilovers on them. They camber them. They put oversized wheels. They stretch the tires. They put cold air intakes on them without a tune. They straight pipe them without a tune. 
They changed the turbo on them. All the things that these kids do to these cars to make them ticking time bombs and then have the sheer audacity to blame Subaru when they blow up. It boggles my mind that on current, actually the problem is not even the older cars, 15 and newer, the VHS, EWX, and STI has the highest rate of destruction because of who is buying the cars, what they're doing with the cars, and how they take care of and drive the cars. These are the people that are perpetuating these bad stereotypes tenfold. Because, oh, this isn't an old Subaru, this is a new Subaru. It's less than five years old, and it blew up on me. Yet, on Subaru dealer tech pages, Subaru dealer techs I know, time and time again, these WRX and STI VHSs, 2015 and newer, come in with destroyed clutches under 5,000 miles, wanting it warranty or place because they were out there launching the car, destroyed their clutch. Spun rod bearings due to never changing the oil, running them low on oil, never checking their oil, blowing them up because they put a tuner on it and ran the crap out of the car and then tried to take the tuner off before taking it to the dealership or just leaving the tuner on and the dealer tech's finding it like these kids don't understand that dealer techs can find tunes in the PCM. We know when you modify the PCM. We know when you change the tune. Putting cold air intakes on them without tuning them leans the engine out severely. We've talked about this in the past. We've talked about the issues with the ring lands, with cracked pistons. It's, it's just infuriating that these people are doing this to these cars and then blaming the manufacturer for the modifications that they do. There is no rhyme, reason, logic to that thinking. Had you left the vehicle in stock form and driven it like a normal vehicle, you would not have had an issue. Granted, I know there are some vehicles that have issues. There are some factory issues that happen. No car comes out perfect. Not every single car that comes off the assembly line is perfect. Parts fail, things fail. That's just how mechanical things work. But when you are deliberately exacerbating that with poor modifications, bad modifications, horrible maintenance, no maintenance, and driving the crap out of the thing, redlining it constantly, launching it, what do you expect? And the sad part is that a bunch of these kind of owners got together and had a class action lawsuit against Subaru, and now Subaru bends over backwards to take care of these cars that have no right to be taken care of under factory warranty. Literally insane the amount of money that Subaru is losing off of taking care of problems directly caused by customers. No fault of Subarus, but they're still taking it on and making it right so they don't get sued again. Insanity. So again, let me stress, I am well aware that there are plenty of turbocharged Subarus that do have some issues left completely stock, maintained, and driven appropriately. I'm not saying they're perfect or flawless. No vehicle is. I'm talking about, again, the modifications and abuse that is then pushed off as being the responsibility of Subaru. Now, on to the naturally aspirated vehicles. We've talked about the turbos and their issues. Now, the NA vehicles, there are plenty of examples that get 200, 300, 400, half a million miles on them with little to no issues other than your normal maintenance stuff. But a lot of times I see Subarus that have issues is again due to neglect of maintenance. Now a lot of people will say, well, that's a downfall for Subaru because well, I can take my Toyota and I can just drive it forever and abuse it and not maintain it and I don't have issues. That's a Toyota. This is a Subaru. You're comparing apples to oranges. You can't compare a Toyota or a Honda or any other brand to a Subaru in the care, maintenance, upkeep. That's like saying that an RX-7 is the same upkeep as a 5.3 liter Vortex Silverado. You're comparing apples and oranges between a rotary engine and a small block V8. 
You can't do any comparisons with Subaru or any other brand. Subaru is Subaru. Toyota is Toyota. Honda is Honda. They all have their individual maintenance schedules, recommended maintenance, things that you need to do to them to make them work properly. And I just see so many people with issues directly caused by poor maintenance. Now, again, I know there are plenty of you out there that maintain your car properly. I know there are plenty of you out there that are great owners. I'm not talking down to you. I'm not talking down. I'm really not even talking down to the people that abuse the crap out of their cars and then blame the car for it. I'm just pissed off. I'm venting. Take it as you will. Either this video is going to be really well received or really poorly received. We will see once I put it up. So... Back to the naturally aspirated cars. Yes, I'm well aware that the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine, the EJ25D, the 251, 252, 253, all had a factory fault of a poor head gasket. It was a poor design, single layer gasket, graphite coated, coating fails around 120,000 miles, head gaskets blow. Yes, that was bad. That was on Subaru, that was Subaru's issue. Subaru should have taken care of that and handled it better. But, Aside from that, so many issues where people blow their engine up because they never changed their time belt, water pump, didn't do the recommended 80 to 100,000 mile service for the timing set, or they blew their head gasket a second time because they didn't do research into who was repairing it, how it was repaired, what gasket was used, or maybe it was just because they never replaced their coolant. They thought it was one of those scams that you see on Dateline or 2020 people. Changing fluids is not a scam. There are plenty, and I mean plenty of people out there will scam you out of your money for these services and not perform them. But brake fluid, coolant, all these fluids are a wear item and need to be replaced. Brake fluid is hydroscopic. Over time, it absorbs water and moisture and humidity out of the air. That's why it gets dark. Brake fluid new, it's clear. It turns dark when it picks up moisture and starts rotting, rusting the interior of your braking components. It rusts out the inside of your brake lines, inside of your master cylinder, inside of your uh, brake calipers, inside of your um, wheel cylinders if you have drum brakes. That's why it needs to be changed periodically to keep the water out of the brake fluid. Also, when the water gets in there, it decreases the boiling point of your brake fluid. It also decreases the hydraulic effectiveness of your brake fluid. That's why it's a wear item and why it needs to be replaced. Your cooling system, the additives in your coolant that keep the coolant and the water in the coolant from rusting the inside of your heater core, inside of your radiator, inside of your engine block, break down over time and heat cycles. It needs to be replaced. It's just, I want to take some people and just shake them and put the sentence back into them because, you know, it's just so many things are preventable. That said, I understand 100% that some of you do not have the money to take care of your vehicles the way you should. I completely understand that. I also completely understand not dumping a ton of money into an older Subaru. You want to buy a cheap Chinese water pump time and belt kit to throw on your 240,000 mile rusted out 2002 Outback that you just want to make one more winter out of. I completely understand that. But doing so on a newer car, cheaping out with cheap parts, non-OE parts, Chinese parts, ill-fitting parts, it's just, why? You know, owning a vehicle is an investment, an investment that the better you invest in it, the more care you take, the longer that investment is going to last you, and the more money you'll save in the long run. So I don't really know where to wrap this up. I've kind of talked in circles. I've kind of run out of steam on this rant. Good to get it out. Hopefully I didn't anger any of you good viewers. Those of you that uh, the shoe fit too tightly, well, you know it fits too tightly and maybe you should take a look at yourself and how you have cared for and taken care of your Subaru. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry again to those that I might have angered. If you're mad, leave it in the comments. Good or bad, I want to hear it. Let me know your experience with your Subaru. Let me know your experience, good or bad. 
Guys, I love hearing your comments where you've gotten two, three, four hundred, five hundred thousand miles out of your Subaru. Guys, I like hearing your comments where you have early failures. I like to know what failed, how it failed, talk to you a little bit more about what happened before it failed. I like to hear that kind of information as well as the information on the cars that have been stellar. Again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see y'all in the next video.